In today's video, we are going to be talking about foods that spike insulin that should be avoided or at least limited if you are trying to reverse insulin resistance. If you are insulin resistant, you might find it difficult to lose weight. You might experience intense sugar cravings or have skin tags. If left untreated, insulin resistance can lead to type 2 diabetes, PCOS, and heart disease. So it is really important to catch it and act upon it early. The best way to reverse insulin resistance is through diet, but there is a lot of confusion over what foods you should and shouldn't eat, which is what we will be talking about today. So in today's video, I'm going to give you the worst nine foods you can eat if you are insulin resistant. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Kate. I'm a health coach and I post videos on a high fat, nutrient dense way of eating. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Feel free to share and make sure to subscribe. And make sure to follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook where I share new posts every single day. Today's video is all about high insulin foods you should avoid if you are trying to reverse insulin resistance. Now I want to start this video off by saying that when you make a diet change, I know it can be really overwhelming to look at a long list of foods that you're not allowed to have. And that's why I think it is really important to highlight what is allowed. So yes, in this video, we are going to be focusing on the negative because I think it is important to mention, but I will be giving you alternative, better options to all the foods we talk about today. And if you do enjoy this video, I have another video on the best foods you can eat for insulin resistance, which you can check out afterwards. But now let's get into the list. Number one, bread. Bread is definitely not a good option for someone who is insulin resistant and trying to keep their insulin low. And I am talking about all types of bread. White bread, whole grain, rye. Yes, some of these options might be slightly better. They might not have as big an impact on your insulin, but the impact is still significant. And remember that the best way to reverse insulin resistance is to keep insulin as low as possible. Now I know this is one of the hardest foods for people to give up. Bread is such a huge part of our diet. Eggs on toast for breakfast, a sandwich for lunch, bread rolls with dinner. But I promise you it is easier to make the switch than you think. Now there are bread alternatives made out of things such as almond flour, which yes, have less of an impact on insulin. They are better in this regard, but I'm not a fan of these products for several reasons, which I won't get into today, but I do have another video where I talk about it. But I really don't think foods like this need a one-to-one -one swap. There are ways to make basically the same meals without bread. Take a burrito, for example. Burrito bowls are a great alternative or a burger that you would normally eat on a bun. So many places now offer lettuce wraps instead. And even if it isn't on the menu, a lot of restaurants will accommodate you. If they can't make a lettuce wrap, they will make you a burger bowl instead. For eggs on toast, you can just ditch the bread and make an omelet or scramble instead. These are just some examples of ways you can skip the bread and your pancreas will thank you. Number two, fruit juice. I think most people nowadays know that juice is basically just liquid sugar. It is actually much worse to drink a glass of orange juice than to eat the orange itself. Juice is a refined source of sugar that is absorbed very easily and very quickly by the body. When you drink juice, your blood sugar will spike significantly and your insulin will as well to deal with the blood sugar. And if you are insulin resistant, your blood sugar and insulin can stay elevated for hours from one seemingly harmless glass of juice. In terms of an alternative, eating the fruit whole is a better option, but it's not great depending on the fruit. The best option is to drink low sugar drinks that don't use artificial sweeteners. So no, I'm not talking about diet soda. What I would suggest is something like Zevia, which is naturally sweetened with Stevia. Or if you live in Australia, there's a brand called Nexpa, which is available at Kohl's and Woolies. And same thing, sweetened with stevia and erythritol. Number three, baked goods. This includes muffins, croissants, pastries, basically anything you find in a bakery you want to stay away from. All of these foods are very refined versions of grains 
and will have a significant insulin impact. Now, I know this can be really tough, especially if you are out celebrating a birthday or a wedding. And what I want to say here is that what matters is what you are doing most of the time. All the right decisions you make, they compound and get you closer and closer to your goal of reversing insulin resistance. But something like eating a baked good every once in a while, it's not going to totally derail your progress. So don't beat yourself up if you want to have a slice of cake at your friend's birthday. It's okay. Just get back to eating the right foods tomorrow. Number four, vegetable oils. Now this one is interesting. Vegetable oils include canola, corn, soybean, sunflower, safflower, grapeseed, and rice bran, which ironically, none of which are vegetables. These oils have not been studied extensively when it comes to insulin resistance, but there is definitely a connection. In one study done on mice, half the mice were fed a diet high in corn oil, so a vegetable oil, and the other were fed a diet high in olive oil. The group eating corn oil developed hyperinsulinemia and insulin resistance. Both groups of mice were eating the exact same amount of fat and the exact same amount of calories, and yet one group developed insulin resistance and the other did not. Now of course this study was done on mice, so it's not a direct comparison to humans, but there are a lot of other reasons to avoid vegetable oils, which I won't get into today, but I have a whole other video on the topic. So what are some alternatives to these vegetable oils? Well, as we learned from the study, olive oil is a better option. Avocado oil is another. But the thing with these two oils is that they aren't the best for high heat cooking. They are better for low heat cooking and consuming raw at room temperature. For higher heat cooking, you want to use fats that are solid at room temperature. Ghee, tallow, butter, lard, and duck fat are all good options. Number five, granola bars. Again, granola bars are just an isolated source of carbohydrates. Carbs are the macronutrient that raises insulin the most. Protein has a moderate effect on insulin and fat next to none. In terms of what you can swap granola bars for, I mean, ideally, you don't want to be snacking at all. As I already mentioned, the longer you can keep your insulin levels low, the better when it comes to reversing insulin resistance. So if you're constantly snacking in between meals, your insulin will always be being bumped up. If you do really need a snack though, there are companies like Perfect Keto, which offer bars that won't cause a significant blood sugar or insulin spike. Basically, you want to look out for bars that are higher in fat and protein and lower in carbs. I will link the ones from Perfect Keto in the description box down below if you want to check them out. Number six, dried fruit. Dried apricots, raisins, any fruit that is dry is not insulin friendly. Like fruit juice, when fruits have become dehydrated, they are basically an isolated source of sugar. When you eat them, the impact to insulin is quick and significant. And once again, whole non-dried fruit is a better option. Number seven, high sugar fruit. And on that note, let's talk about which fruits are best. Anything that is high in sugar is best avoided, or at least kept to a minimum. These are fruits such as bananas, grapes, apples, peaches, and pineapple. These all have a significant impact on insulin. Better options are fruits lower in sugar. Berries such as blueberries, raspberries, and strawberries, lemons and limes, and kiwi. Number eight, pasta. Like bread and some of the other foods we have talked about today, pasta is a refined source of carbohydrates and has a significant impact on our insulin. Some good swaps for pasta are zucchini noodles or konjac noodles. Number nine, beans. And finally, we have beans and legumes. Beans are a funny one. I honestly think they are one of the worst tasting foods. They have to be drowned in sauce and other ingredients in order to make them palatable. But taste aside, they really do not have much going for them on any front. They are not insulin friendly. They raise it significantly. They are filled with anti-nutrients that diminish the nutritional value and also wreak havoc on our gut. And they can even be poisonous if not prepared properly. Usually the reason people eat beans is for a plant-based source of protein, 
But honestly, when it comes to insulin resistance, you're better off getting protein from animal sources, such as beef, chicken, eggs, and fish. Now, as I mentioned a bit earlier, protein does raise insulin moderately, and some studies have shown that certain types of protein can raise insulin just as much as certain types of carbs. But here's the thing with protein. The need for the liver to create glucose determines what the insulin response to protein will be. What do I mean by this? If you are eating a low carb diet, you will not be getting much glucose, carbs, in through your diet. So your liver will be producing glucose. And if your liver is creating glucose, the insulin response to dietary protein is very low. For someone who is eating a high carb diet and their liver is making no glucose, their insulin response to dietary protein will be higher. So this is something to keep in mind. By this point in the video, it should be pretty clear that the key to reversing insulin resistance is keeping your insulin low. And since carbs trigger insulin the most, they should definitely be limited. If you are following a low carb approach, you don't need to worry as much about the insulin response to protein. If you aren't following this approach, however, then yes, the insulin response to protein can be significant, especially when paired with carbohydrates. Anyways, guys, that's all I have for you today. Let me know in the comment section down below if you've taken any of these foods out of your diet and if that helped to improve your insulin resistance. Your comments and likes really help to support my channel, so thank you. If you did enjoy this video, you might also enjoy this video here, which has a three day meal plan for insulin resistance. If you want to catch up on my most recent upload, you can find it right here. And if you want to check out my keto diet and carnivore diet coaching programs, you can find them here. Thanks again, guys. I'll see you next time. Bye.